So hello everyone. So we starting, we're starting session number three. This is the study group for Arizona State University Coursera TESOL program. And we have Aziza Musoiva who will moderate our class. Over to you, Aziza. Yeah, okay. Hello everyone. I do hope you, uh, all of you are well in these days. So yeah, today uh, we'll continue our um, <clears throat> course. Uh, it's the second course in TESOL by Arizona State University. And uh, before beginning, uh, let me just uh, show you something because many uh, people asking me which one is the right one because you know, there, are, there is just one TESOL course in Coursera and it is by Arizona State University. Uh, the thing is, it is divided into two parts. Sometimes people find the first part, sometimes they find the second part. So it is more highly recommended to uh, begin with the first part because it is much more easier than the second part. And uh, if you want, you just uh, go uh, like, uh, like here, you write TESOL, for example. Many people ask me, that's why I need to show one more time. So this, this is the third one. You see here, the picture is here different, like three people here uh, by Arizona State uh, University TESOL, it's written. You can also uh, uh, enroll one by one, for example, part one, part two, but many people ask me why it's showing me just four courses. If you want that uh, all the courses show you, then you need to enroll uh, this one, which is, uh, I said already, it is, um, it consists of eight courses, but don't worry if you uh, already enrolled the first one, the first part, it doesn't mean that you are in another course. No, it is the same course, just it is um, the first part. That's why uh, you can continue the second part, okay? Uh, today, uh, we'll continue with our uh, second uh, course. Uh, the name of the course uh, is called uh, Second Language Acquisition. Okay, let me, uh, yes, Theories of Second Language Acquisition. Here, uh, we most of the time we will focus on the uh, history of um, teaching and also we'll focus on um, how to say the purpose uh, of teaching content and technique of teaching so in this in this part uh, the second language acquisition there are uh, you will uh, learn about how to write how uh, for example some uh, teaching philosophy and uh, some uh, language theories that existed like about more than 100 years ago before. So uh, you will learn uh, about them and you will also learn uh, how, uh, for example, some technique, techniques of that approach still we are using. So today I want to make the um, session more interactive. So uh, if you let me, uh, I have here one uh, technique uh, which is called a random name selector. So if anyone, for example, wants to uh, take part in the session in speaking, for example, in giving opinions, there is no any wrong answer. So don't be afraid, don't uh, be shy. For example, I'm also a shy person. So just, uh, you need to talk. I mean, if, if, if you, of course, uh, agree, if you agree, I just write here our names. So when I, uh, for example, uh, click go, it selects a name so we can uh, give a chance for that person to speak. If you agree, of course. So what, what do you think about it? Are you here? Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, Nadira says yes and yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. let me write. Uh, okay, I begin my name because nobody's saying so. Nadira, okay. So can I Zioda. write your name? Yoda wants. Mm -hmm. Who else wants? Yoda. Munira Bonu. 
Um, yeah, in Indira, are you in? Okay. Just four people. Come on, people, please. What about you, uh, Mrs. Mudra? Um. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I would I would prefer the yeah, others to be um uh, to Listen. help everyone. Yes, yeah, so okay. I'm not sure. Uh, who else wants to uh, just sometimes speak? Just three people. Hmm. Let me show you how it works. So, for example, when I uh, press go. It selects uh, our name, so let's see. For example, Zioda, you see? So then I give a chance uh, Zioda to speak like this. Okay, so if anyone wants, still we will write their names. Uh, in this point, uh, I just uh, talk just five minutes then we can begin uh, speaking, okay? So the yeah, um, participants today, well, uh, most of the time we talk about, um, first of all, we will talk about purpose, content and technique, because, you know, in teaching, they are uh, very important. Uh, once you know about your purpose, why you are teaching and who you are teaching, uh, then uh, the content will be uh, visible for you because uh, content means uh, what kind of uh, techniques you use, resources you use, you know. Uh, once, for example, purpose uh, changes, the content and technique also change. That's why uh, in teaching, uh, these three things are very important. Uh, by <clears throat> by purpose, it means uh, why uh, why should we teach languages uh, or who should we uh, who should we teach uh, a language? Uh, purpose means why and who. It it answers to why and who. Yes, and um, if we talk about uh, content, uh, it uh, answers the question what we teach. For example, what other materials are required uh, in teaching process. Uh, as I said before, uh, once the purpose changed, also content changed. For example, imagine you are mm, teaching in, uh, in, at institute, but a friend of you asks you to teach uh, one lesson at primary <coughs> school. So just one lesson. So uh, here, of course, you, you change the content because you cannot uh, teach, uh, for example, the content that you teach at university. That's why uh, purpose is different there to make fun for children and, and people also different there, it is children. So uh, techniques also change in this case. Techniques means how does a learner um, learn a language? For example, some learners uh, has got different uh, how to say, uh, some of them are kinesthetic, some of them are visual, so uh, it is uh, teachers, uh, how to say, uh, responsibility, or maybe I can say, um, to know how their learner can learn a language properly, so, and then how should a teacher teach a language. So yeah, you see, uh, these um, three things are very important. And I have got here the sixth question. How, sh how do we help students remember a language? So I prepared one, um, how to say, uh, collaborative uh, uh, activity in niapod.com. So I already uh, wrote the chat in the chat about niapod.com. If you, uh, can you please go to niapod.com? You will just write uh, the answer for this question. You will not talk, just you will uh, text it, okay? And I will give you the code. The question is how, uh, let me see one more time. How uh, do we help? Uh, students remember a language. It's just your opinion. Uh, there is no wrong answer, so you can answer uh, anything that you want. So uh, has everyone uh, 
godniapod.com now in their smartphones. Yes, could you please give us the code? Yeah, it's appearing now, one, one second. Uh, yes, the code is GNXUA. So once you go there, there is a box uh, written student, and then you need to write this code and join. And then uh, you will answer the question, how do we help students remember a language? Have you done? I mean, Notre you... part? Notre part? Yoda? Uh, uh, the, the code is GNXUF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Okay, we'll try. It is neapod.com. Yeah, this one. Can you see on your screen? Right, yes. Near put for students and it is asked for uh, for session. Okay. As you say, it's saying that uh, the collaborate board is waiting for the teacher's input. I already put there my question. So, yes. What about now? No, still. I'll refresh, I'm refreshing. Okay, now I can, yeah, now we can. Okay, two uh, teachers, two participants already answered. Okay, so for now, um, all right. So uh, can you see here on my screen, the answers? For example, Sarvinos said that by teaching via action. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we can see it. Yeah, what action do you mean, Sarvinos? Can you answer or you just want to, uh, to keep silent. Another uh, Kopilova said, I personally use mnemonics, uh, ac acronyms, spaced repetition and analogies. Okay. 
Um, is it yours? Yeah, not Europa. By giving meaningful tasks would require to use the language memorization techniques like flashcards, mnemonics, or Loki or others. Uh, what is uh, mnemonics? Um, mnemonics, when you um, associate words with other words. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For example, um, um, it can be different, uh, but it can be this even using these um, acronyms, you know, for example, we remember fanboys, right? So like it's uh, um, F stands for four and so these are the conjunctions that we have to put comma before them uh, why, when they join two independent clauses. So for example, these kind of things help us remember. So when we associate something with something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other said for kids through the activities, activities, games. Okay, um, Munira Bono said it depends on the level of learners. For instance, for children who attend preschool, the best way of remembering a language is to show pictures and say the names of it items together. Okay, I think Munira Bono wrote two times, or is it two Munira Bono? For adults, learners, as I learned. In Coursera, we can sometimes use metaphor, body language, and so on. Yes. Thank you, dear participants. Uh, I have got one more activity here. Uh, I don't know, should we do uh, right now or um, then? What can you say? Can you suggest? You are the teacher, you are the boss. You decide. <laughs> yeah, it is about, actually, it's about the uh, uh, approach. So I think uh, many of you already, um, how to say, learned about approaches, right? So it is not so difficult. You can guess them. Just it is. Uh, it calls time to climb. So it's very interesting game. If you uh, don't mind, we can begin because we are here now. So it, it would be more easier to do now. Uh, can you see it or not uh, in your phone? Not, not that I, you are already there, yes? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Settled. <laughs> yes, what about others? Let's uh, wait others to appear. Oh, Nirabono. <laughs> okay. It's just uh, not difficult. Come on, people, join, please. Oh, sorry, not okay. <laughs> Who else? Nodira, Malika. Okay. Fioda. Okay. Anyone else, or should I start? Yeah, yes, please. Yes, OK, please. let's start. I press start. Now we'll see. Can you see in your phones? Is it started? Yes, it, it has started. Okay, yes, begin. It's uh, uh, 10 questions, so it is about approach that we already, um, maybe many of you, you know already, even you don't uh, uh, enrolled in this TESOL or even you haven't uh, studied this second course yet, you can guess them. And then we will talk one by one about them.
So if you don't mind, I would, yeah, can you make it um, quieter? Yeah, um, I would, um, I can share my screen so that, you know, people see if they are not playing, they can see what's going on, okay, from a participant's view. Can they see it now? didn't join they cannot see right what's happening so therefore I'm saying so I'll, I'll do that okay okay we can just see on your screen we can just see the results but not the questions can I show the questions to everyone yeah yeah you yeah yeah of course Okay, so here are the questions on your pod. So, which language approach utilize the following techniques? Reading aloud, conversation practice, map drawing, information gaps. Oops, I was late. Bummer, out of time. Now we have to buckle down and try to answer this one. Okay, which approach asserts the use of readings at a level to the learner's knowledge, vocabulary words, grammatical items from those readings? Taking long, right? So, can you time this near port so that it's time? Um, this is a, not no, now, but uh, in general. I'm asking in general. question yes there are 10 questions Last question. Uh, should I now show my uh, screen? Uh, we can, uh, can. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, I forgot that I'm sharing mine. Yes, could you please uh, share your screen? Okay. 
Okay. So yeah, you see, um, we have the points and thank you for participation. Okay, so you can now, um, I don't know how to <laughs> So yeah, any ideas, please? Uh, did you like this activity? <laughs> I really like this activity. So interesting, but uh, I will. Uh, I join. I joined very late, a little bit late. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know. Uh, so I will. I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please go on. Funny game. Anyway, and uh, so fruitful also. Yeah, I learned it from um, one day uh, there was a, a session in Mentor Hub. Yes, and I learned from there. And this is the first time I'm using it. So I think it's, it's okay, yes. Yeah? But it's good for the first time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, okay, the uh, participant. So uh, is, does it every, anyone want to say something, no? Uh, yeah, hello? thank you. I think, yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, and if you remember the previously, the previous week or the, uh, the last, we talked about the Zoom learning, yes, distance learning and the Zoom. And, and as I remember, uh, somebody taught us how to use this game. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To be, it, it, was it you? Were you, you? No, no, not no, me. It, it was, I it, learned it, uh, at that time. Yeah, it was Nurhan Madiarova. Nurhan, yes. Nurhan, 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 yes, Madiarova yes. Nurhan. from Dubai. Yeah, yeah, she uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Dubai yes, yes. In, in was... school. Yeah, mm -hmm. she showed us different. Yeah, yes, yes, fun. yes. The video will be available on YouTube if you want to rewatch it or people who miss that soon. Um, yeah, and I'll give the link if people miss yeah. that. It was a really great one. Yeah, we learned mm -hmm. lots of interesting techniques the tools, online tools. Yeah, it okay. was very Yeah, great. Productive. I think, yeah, we can move on. Yes, we want to. Okay, yes. In the first method. week, as I said, uh, we talked about uh, purpose, content, and technique. In the second week, uh, they are in um, TESOL. Uh, they talk about four um, very fundamental uh, approaches in ESL teaching. Uh, first one is grammar translation method, second direct approach, and reading approach, audio lingual approach. So uh, let's go one by one. So if you remember grammar translation method, they said it about uh, in 1980s, it appeared. So, uh, so the purpose was uh, to teach uh, uh, rich people, uh, rich young, uh, but men, not women, most of the time, to teach how to read, for example, Latin, Greek, uh, to, uh, to teach culture and morality and uh, language for its, it was, uh, they talk uh, like to, how to say, teach the language for its own sake, like in intellectual exercise. It means, uh, for example, they most of the time focused on uh, classical books, uh, such as Homer, Bible, uh, long passage of text, different genres, poetry, short story, and novel. So, and uh, they used most of the time uh, translation and back translation. Back translation means uh, you translate, um, for example, English, um, English text into Uzbek and then you again translate it, uh, the translated version you translate into English. So in that case, you, uh, students learn uh, more about uh, vocabulary. So uh, here uh, the focus was most of the time in, on the didactic grammar instruction. So 
means uh, more, more grammar instruction. So, and uh, reading comprehension questions, fill in the blanks, memorization of vocabulary and etc. So as you said, as you see here, speaking was uh, de-emphasized, but deductive grammar was emphasized. So there is one question for you. So uh, which, um, for example, techniques uh, are we still using from grammar translation method or are we not using them at all? So any ideas, please? I remember, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, please. I remember when we studied at the um, World Languages University, we had only one uh, book. It was uh, Arak Arakian, do you remember it? Yeah, I and remember. We used we use it to trans. We, we just translated it and 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 nothing more. And I remember that time we had no speech. We just translated or we did uh, grammar exercises. But nowadays I sometimes use this method because as I teach um, smaller kids, uh, it's very important to um, explain them in their mother tongue, for example, in Russian or in Uzbek, what the contain means, not just translating word by word, but, by, but the meaning, because as they are very young, they have no practice, um, life practice, uh, they have got problem with understanding, with recognizing or with uh, just um, thinking about one or two things in, in this um, way I just try to use this method to translating translate in Russian or in Uzbek and explain it how it uh, in real life happened okay uh, who was it uh, Ziota you yeah, yes yes it's me okay any other ideas? Uh, if you any if anyone wants, I can write their names here, so you you can also participate. So any other ideas? Which uh, techniques uh, are we still using? So you see on the screen, Nodira. So Nodira, uh, which techniques from grammar translation method are we still using nowadays? Lucky me. Um... So uh, the most important feature that's, uh, that is still kept from grammar translation method nowadays, I think it's uh, checking reading comprehension. So we do post reading activities, for example, after uh, reading the te text, we ask some questions in order to understand whether the students got the meaning, the gist of the um, text or not. So that is one thing we still use from this method. Yeah. Okay, so uh, all of the answers that you said are correct. So uh, we can also see here still uh, some, for example, use of antonyms and synonyms. They are also from uh, grammar translation approach. For example, using cognates. Cognates means, for example, to use uh, the words that's similar to uh, to the words in uh, in foreign languages for example um, how can i say it for example the word stop yes in russian it's also stop right Our last one is fill in the blank or writing composition you see we are we are still using uh, them and um, they are still effective. So that's why, for example, uh, sometimes teachers say that uh, all grammar translation uh, approach is out, out, out of like, it's not using now, but still uh, sometimes we don't know that we are using, but we are using them, right? So the second approach, uh, which we will talk uh, with you is a uh, direct approach or direct in it, it appeared in 1910. Uh, so here, uh, speaking uh, mostly emphasized. So, it, uh, but uh, grammar uh, was not uh, too much emphasized, uh, and uh, it, it is used. The purpose was to teach students who want to study or visit other countries 
to travel or to experience the culture, history or people. And the content was dialogue uh, and conversation passages about uh, how cultures uh, live, geography, politics, and etc. So here, um, the techniques were reading aloud, for example, sometimes in primary school, I remember I, I taught there like three, four years. Yeah, I used sometimes uh, reading aloud. So uh, they liked me to uh, read uh, because uh, when I read, they also listen. So it helps them uh, to catch uh, how the words can be pronounced or conversation practice can be one more technique. Map drawing, information gaps, question and answers. And all of them are, was, I mean, the techniques that is used in direct approach. So still we are using some approach from uh, these, uh, some techniques from this ap approach, which are, for example, uh, enactments via dialects or self uh, student self correction uh, draw a picture through dictation using maps and information gap i think many of us uh, use information gap um, yes any ideas about direct approach or question Yes, I am also use this uh, technique because I think in a very early stage of learning language is very important to check students' pronunciation yes. because if we if we don't teach them correctly pronounce they they uh, will use these words till they uh, a lot of times long years and it would be very very maybe uh, ashamed when they go somewhere abroad and say some some words uh, for example the word luxury luxury <laughs> as our students used to to use this uh, this kind of mistakes that's why it's it's really very very important and useful approach mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what can you say about student self-correction? How can you make uh, your student uh, self-correct themselves? Well, uh, first I let students, not uh, the same student, but the others, his peers, correct him. But if they don't know these words or if they cannot pronounce it, I will pronounce it myself or I will just uh, switch up the translator, British English and American English and let them to listen, let them listen them. Okay, so do you, uh, do you like give feedback or do you interrupt, for example, while talking? Oh, no, 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 no. When no. do you give uh, feedback? When do you uh, say? Uh, uh, actually, uh, after reading, after reading, because um, students are so emotional, so emotional, they can just um, become sad very, very fast. That's why I just, uh, till, until the end. And after that, I let, I, I ask, is there any pronunciation mistakes? If somebody just um, uh, paid attention, they say, if not, I just show the word or just remind them. And we will discuss and I make the same students to repeat that word or that sentence again. Okay. Any is it correct? <laughs> there is no uh, wrong answer. It's your uh, like technique. It's okay. Why not? So yes, in, as, uh, in this, I mean, in the second uh, week, there is assignment. Uh, it uh, asks you to discuss the differences between grammar translation approach and the direct approach, and which approach most uh, closely aligns with your current teaching style. So um, 
in such kind of assignments, uh, for example, I wrote one uh, page uh, in Microsoft Word, one page answer. In the first um, paragraph, I wrote about the uh, how to say differences between them. You need uh, you don't need to write all of them. Like you, for example, you just open uh, the uh, for example this approach how content and purpose and technique, then you can write, for example, in direct approach, um, dialects uh, and conversation are used and speaking emphasize, but in, uh, but in uh, grammar uh, translation uh, approach, speaking de-emphasize, you can write uh, such kind of answer, yes? Uh, uh, which approach uh, most closely aligns uh, with your current teaching? So here also you need to answer, for example, which approach. So um, we can, uh, just now we can ask uh, the participants. So we, you know already the difference between them. So uh, second, can you answer the second question? Which approach most closely aligns with your current teaching style? Nobody wants? I mean, from these two, uh, translation and direct, from these yeah, two. Yeah, because you need to write there also, like uh, you can, uh, you cannot say, for example, oh, I don't use these two approach at all, or you can a little bit, for example, two, three sentences at least you need to write um, because in every two uh, approach, they ask you these two questions that you need to answer there, yes. Alliance means like uh, similar or like, how to say, which approach you use, for example. So uh, you can answer, for instance, uh, um, as I said before, still the, these approach are using, you can say, for example, uh, I use sometimes uh, reading comprehension question after reading, or I also use fill in the blanks uh, after reading or uh, while listening uh, the audio or in that from direct approach, you can use, uh, you can say, or about uh, grammar translation or about a uh, direct approach, or you can tell both of them that you use. For example, you can say, I, I also used uh, draw a picture through dictation because I used to do this one, if I, yeah, as I remember. So you can say also, I use information gap. Um, yes. Uh, Anyway, uh, while it is asking you in assignments, yeah, you need to um, answer a little bit about uh, the questions that they are asking. So let's go on with the uh, next two uh, approach. Uh, uh, the first one is reading approach. It appeared in 1930. So uh, here also uh, again, uh, speaking de-emphasized, but grammar emphasized, uh, they, um, they want uh, to, to uh, focus most of the time on grammar, on reading, yes. And it is, uh, the purpose was to teach students who will mostly like uh, never leave the country, who is like, as, as Dr. Uh, Dr. Dixon said, uh, who is normal students. Normal students means as, uh, in his approach means a student who just learned the language uh, in the classroom and outside they don't use, yes. It is like, um, more or less, uh, uh, it looks like sometimes uh, the approach that we are using in our country, yes. Uh, yeah, but uh, I can say that uh, maybe uh, the students are using outside of the classroom, but 
still we need time to uh, to do this communicative approach uh, more visible more obvious in our uh, teach uh, in our uh, like authentic situations so and also uh, the purpose was to teach a practical skill student might actually use uh, or they don't use maybe or to teach by using uh, teachers who are not native speakers and uh, they are uh, one of the most important things that uh, in this period um, Standard, standardized tests appeared and uh, the purpose was to pass the test. So uh, teachers taught so that their students passed the test. So the content was uh, reading um, uh, that are leveled to the learner's knowledge, vocabulary words from reading, uh, grammar, grammatical items uh, from those reading. And uh, as I said, uh, the focus was most on, of the time on grammar, memorization of vocabulary, translation of oral um, proficiency, not uh, oral pro proficiency, not uh, emphasized, yes, sorry. Translation also emphasized, they translated sometimes, but not as the uh, grammar translation approach. And um, evaluative performance through testing is emphasized. So, as I said before, uh, at, in this point, uh, standardized test appeared, uh, especially set appeared, and then uh, teachers began to teach uh, so that their students uh, pass the test. So here uh, the question can come that uh, which uh, techniques we are still using from uh, reading approach, what can you say? In our class, we use uh, reading technique to enlarge our point of view, because still, uh, unfortunately, in, in a governmental um, public schools, there are a lot, uh, very, very little information for um, students, for kids, for uh, younger, for teenagers. That's why, for example, the last week we talked about the spaceships and uh, about the Neil Armstrong. But uh, my students <laughs> didn't even know uh, the name of the first spaceship which landed on the moon. Oh. And from, th from the text, we learn it about this. We, we just um, learn it about the first uh, astronaut and the uh, first astronaut who landed on the moon. And what did they say? For example, I just said, don't you... Uh, haven't you heard about the Neil Armstrong's one, one little step for man, uh, one big leap for man, uh, mankind? Mm -hmm. They were very surprised. And that's why I just try to use these techniques to enlarge my students' point of view, okay. to discuss, analyze, to uh, get more information and of course to learn new words from this text yeah okay any other ideas i have a question yes please can you make clear what is the difference between reading approach and uh, grammar translation approach? Okay, uh, in grammar translation approach, they uh, most uh, of the time they uh, focused on translating something. And uh, let me open this page one more time. And, uh, and uh, at that time, we are talking at that time, actually, at that time they taught this language to to young men, just men, they uh, they emphasize the role of men in society, not women, and uh, they used uh, to read uh, such Homer Bible long passages, and they translated it, uh, and they did back translation, and uh, they used uh, this memorization of vocabulary, long vocabulary, right. Uh, but in uh, 
uh, reading approach, uh, it is they they said it is not just it was not just for men or women. It was for everyone. It was to teach uh, to teach to everyone, but uh, to teach uh, for the purpose of uh, just. Uh, learning a language in the classroom and um, so what else it was again the memorization of vocabulary you see uh, they look like to each other but in this period uh, standardized uh, test appeared this is the most important thing that uh, they begin teaching students for the purpose of testing them not only uh, just uh, reading long passages or translating, but also for the purpose of the test. Uh, I think this is a obvious, uh, how to say, uh, difference. But uh, if you think there are some other differences, you are welcome to give your opinion. I can skimming scanning. Uh, be example for reading approach. Yes. Okay, go on, please. Uh, nowadays, uh, while we are doing our reading tasks, uh, we use skimming, scanning, because I think they are very useful. Yeah. Uh, especially in IELTS, uh, say for exams, uh, we use uh, these uh, messages so much, I think. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Yes, we are, uh, we are still using some techniques from uh, reading approach, which are, as you said, skimming and scanning, and extensive reading, which means uh, reading for how to say, you can ask your students to read uh, more books, more articles, uh, not just saying, uh, for example, to read uh, the exact thing, but uh, to read anything that are um, in English and that uh, helps to broaden the student's uh, knowledge. And guided reading means uh, when you, uh, when teacher um, talk, uh, when teacher asks students to read, uh, for example, um, the passage or the text, and give them uh, instruction uh, time after time, like through scaffolding. This is uh, guided reading. So you see, there are three still uh, three techniques that we are using from uh, reading approach, uh, which are very, um, how to say, uh, productive in uh, reading activities. I think because, as for me. Uh, I think extensive reading is very, um, how to say, uh, as I said before, productive because uh, once your students or once you read, uh, you will have more opinion about anything. So that's why Dr. Dixon even said that good reading is good writing. Good reading is good speaking. You see, uh, when you read more, when you read extensively, so... Uh, it helps you to give your opinion in as a context. So yeah, the next approach is audio lingual approach. Many of us know about this approach, I think. So yeah, you see it appeared just before the World War II. And uh, it was uh, the here again speaking emphasized. So they did this um, uh, teaching like through repetition. So at that time, the pur purpose was to teach so soldiers how to speak so they can communicate with enemies and allies. And um, that's why they repeated uh, the words, uh, the chunks, the lexical frames, um, like more and more time so that uh, they become uh, like memorized in their uh, minds, yes, and then to, uh, the purpose was to teach anyone who needs to communicate orally, but uh, but the, the thing is, uh, they emphasize the role of repetition, not communicating uh, in authentic situation, but repeating the words, uh, the dialects, uh, for example, uh, 
um, content was as uh, is written here, dialects, uh, language mimicry without a focus on meaning and uh, visual aids, for example, objects and pictures, for example, still we can use them, for example, saying this is uh, an apple and uh, you ask your students, can you repeat after me? You see, once they are repeating, so it stays in, you, in their mind more. So technique was habit formation drills, for example, um, backward build up chain, single and multi slot substitution means uh, for example, you give uh, uh, some drills, uh, one of them say, I like swimming, for example, and you ask them to change, uh, for example, verb, verb, for example, you say, I like sw swimming or I hate sw swimming, or you can ask them to change uh, the, uh, how to say, you can ask them to say, for example, one of them says, I like swimming and the second one uh, repeats the first person's sentence and says her sentence. For example, uh, you can say, uh, she likes swimming, but I like uh, gardening. You see, this is habit formation drills. Um, direct dialect memorization, yes, sometimes we used. Uh, I remember from my, um, school times that sometimes we uh, memorized uh, long dialects and we uh, we role played it in front of the classroom we didn't uh, prepare the dialect by by ourselves but we memorized uh, use of minimal pairs it is in in pronunciation you know uh, minimal pairs is like uh, the words that uh, are similar to each other Mm, grammar games and over learning was emphasized there. Over learning means to learn too much, for example, to repeat too much, uh, one thing again and again so that it uh, reminds, it stays in your mind for a long time. So uh, again, I can ask you here that uh, what, which uh, techniques from here we are still using uh, nowadays from audio lingual approach. Uh, so can I try? Yes, please. Uh, so repetitions, we still sometimes ask students to repeat. And the activity which you just mentioned, when, for example, one student says something, the second one just repeats and gives his own opinion, like his own option. We sometimes use this activity in our lessons as well, in teaching grammar, for example, new rules. And here it's also written that uh, visual aids, objects and pictures, we still bring different kind of uh, pictures to explain the new topic or yeah. to introduce the new vocabulary. We still use our bilingual approach, but it doesn't, um, we don't cover the whole lesson with this approach, but in some of the parts we use them, like we just apply this method. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, you know what, I just want to emphasize here something that before I thought that uh, learning the language with the help of grammar translation method and audio lingual approach is kind of uh, difficult and not so much appropriate. I prefer TLT, but now recently I started learning Arabic, but now I realized that the grammar translation and audio lingual approach are also good for the starters who don't know anything about that language, who don't speak at all, even don't know the letters. So yeah. uh, now kind of, yeah, you know, like as a teacher, I always asked from my, even the students who are at the beginner level to use English. And I tried to use only English during the lesson and they kind of succeeded because they have some background knowledge at school. They learn some new vocabulary. Yeah, like they have some understanding of the English language, but uh, for the people who don't have any idea about the language, those approaches are also very good to start at the beginning to get some uh, points, like to get some ideas. But later, maybe like CLT method can be used uh, kind of widely to explain the topic much better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anyone else? So. <clears throat> From audio lingual approach, uh, still we are using, for example, some techniques uh, that are uh, use of language labs um, uh, and habit formation drills, uh, as I said before. And uh, yes, uh, language labs, it is like, for example, 
you can ask your students uh, to to try a new technique uh, as for me nowadays i I'm learning French and I'm using uh, tech, uh, techniques like uh, some apps. And as I see fr from that apps that they uh, focus more on repetition. And uh, uh, so it is like uh, use of language labs. You can ask your students to use some kind of apps, techniques uh, that uh, uh, helps them to learn uh, the language in their own pace or at their own pace or use of minimal pairs in pronunciation as i uh, said before or dialects memorization and the last one is gamification gaming in educational context so yes you see as uh, we already did gaming in neapod.com uh, you see it it gives more motivation to students and uh, uh, it gives more rewards and uh, this uh, can help students to uh, learn to have more uh, like uh, how to say uh, motivation to learn the language. So yeah, uh, the assignment here again appears, uh, discuss the difference between the reading approach and audio lingual approach and which approach most uh, closely aligns with your current teaching style. So you need again, uh, write your ideas about uh, this. Uh, that's why um, I, I made all these uh, slides to, uh, to be visible, which are, which are them uh, has got different technique, which are the, has got different, so that it would be easier for you now to uh, to write uh, the answers there. Maybe some of you already did. Yes, uh, anyone who did who wrote uh, answer for this assignment here. Today we are so, so shy, yes? <laughs> oh, everything is clear for you now. We should write it on the chat or on the chat or on the um, internet. No, you can talk. In, no, you can speak. I mean, you can tell. Ah, you can say, say not write, yes? Yeah, yeah, not writing. Um, I think it both... is just assignments. Now I want you to give your opinion. That's it. And you're, you will write there if they ask you to write. I mean, if you are doing the course, you can um, answer orally here, of course. I think each each technique, each approach is very important in the in their places, uh, in their times, because uh, for for being a good teacher and to to became your class very fruitfully and interesting and uh, just unexpected <laughs> not not repeated you should use all techniques all techniques and in your class should be various very um, colorful and these both techniques i like it very much thank you very much for your um, explanation and I will try to use them both, uh, but uh, I think for uh, little, for seven or eight years students, um, repetitions is, uh, or dialogue memorizing is more uh, useful, I think, because they are like uh, parrots, they just um, repeat after you, repeat after you, and you should always remind them how to greet, how to ask, uh, how to begin question, and etc. and etc. And, and that's why the lingual method is very useful for uh, for a beginner or for small uh, auditory. Uh, okay, which uh, what level do you teach nowadays? Kids, <laughs> kids, kids. Yes. at school. I'm, you mean primary ah, school? No, no, no. I uh, I teach at the language center. 
Yeah, last time you said, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Good. Are you now doing a TESOL course? No, but no? the previous, <laughs> no, no, the previous, uh, the previous, uh, the last year I just um, uh, participated in TESOL in Tashkent, which was organized by uh, ITT institution. Okay. And you took I, the whole course or you just... Uh... No, the whole course, it was six weeks uh, uh, class, one, okay. 120 hours. Oh, okay. Did you but, uh, uh, learn these kind of things there or it's different? Uh, the same, the same. The same, okay. Yes, okay. But, now, but now I want to join another Coursera, this Coursera, which you just recommend, because I think uh, at the same time, I will uh, understand uh, <laughs> more effectively because the, the last year I was... Um, I was fresher, yes, Novichok, yeah. and I, I, I was absolutely just um, don't know how it is because it was absolutely new for me. After after eighteen years of teaching, I just opened it, uh, a new world for myself, new methods, new techniques, new approach, and it was really very helpful. But uh, as I said, I, it was the first time, and I was I wasn't ready for this one. But now I think it would be refreshing for me, and I will um, just uh, I will learn it more. Uh, better better than last in detail year. yes in details yes in detail yeah it is 150 hours here and uh, uh, the course is different because how to say it is like first of all it is online so actually for me it is the first course that i'm uh, the first long course i mean that i'm taking online so as nowadays i'm doing my phd and uh, the how to say um uh, the themes that I'm researching, it is uh, online, like the role of online learning in teacher professional development, so that I need to know uh, how it goes, you know, in order to, to know, you need to try, that's why I, I was, I begin this course, actually, yeah, it is very fun, and yeah, it, for example, sometimes uh, it takes too long to do some task of, of this, but uh, you can learn many things from this course. I highly recommend you. And uh, you can also uh, do like, how to say, uh, open some skills in yourself. For example, I learned how to upload uh, videos on YouTube, how to do some, how to upload my, um, how to say the, uh, documents on Google Drive and so forth. That's why it, it does not only give you just uh, information about TESOL, but many things that you can do online. Yes, yes, I, I, I noticed it. But one problem for me is writing, writing a lot of paper, <laughs> writing in, in yeah. with the academic vocabulary is so difficult because, uh, you know, we used to use very elementary words, very uh, easy words, ordinary words, but they just uh, asked us to, to be more complicated, to be more uh, to, to write more with the more academic words with a difficult word and it's it's so big problem for me I think it's 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 a little I should just study myself study myself and yeah. research research a lot of research I can recommend you for example first of all you write uh, with the simple words that you can and then you can uh, substitute some words with academic um, academic words. For example, uh, as for me, if I don't find uh, academic words for some uh, simple words, I go to Cambridge Advanced uh, Dictionary I have got here. Uh, so I go there, I write the, this simple word and it gives you more, uh, more synonyms. So I can use uh, some like how to say very cool words in my uh, writing so that it becomes more academic, you know. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> you can use this technique. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. 
so yeah, in the fourth week, we will uh, talk about cognitive approach, uh, effective humanistic approach, comprehension approach, and our lovely one, communicative approach. So let's begin. In, uh, uh, as I said before, cognitive uh, approach, it appeared in 1960, and uh, the purpose was uh, uh, recognize the unique properties of human mind. So it is uh, most of the time this approach uh, focused on research, on researching how human minds work. For example, um, especially in learning languages, uh, if you know, for example, how um, your brain stimuli in some uh, context or in learning some words uh, so that you will know your uh, students. Uh, this approach may be not a very, very classroom approach, but it helps uh, especially teachers to understand the learners at that time. And uh, the techniques was there, they didn't use too much techniques, but they used uh, focused on the learners uh, and le learning uh, strategies. Um, still, uh, we are using some uh, some techniques from this approach, of course. Uh, for example, uh, feedback on errors and explicit uh, grammar instructions. So you see, uh, feedback is uh, very important. Uh, as we know nowadays, uh, we can give feedback in. Uh, especially we, we should give feedback uh, at the end because if we interact all the time, of course the students become more shy and they don't talk anymore. That's why uh, cognitive uh, scientists said that uh, in giving feedback, uh, teachers should be very careful. So uh, still we are using, for example, pre-reading and pre-listening activities. Especially uh, we can say here some warm-up activities, um, showing some pictures. For example, imagine uh, your, uh, for example, your theme is about uh, kitchen. So before beginning the lesson, you can show the uh, the kitchen to them, the picture of kitchen, and you can ask them, what can you see? What do you think the, our lesson will be about? What do you think we will read about? Or what do you think we'll listen about? You see, it, uh, it stimul uh, stimulates the uh, uh, brain function and, uh, uh, and they know that uh, something is coming, uh, which is uh, connected with the pictures that that they are uh, seeing just now. Or as the cognitive processes, as Robert Gagne, uh, Gagne said, uh, as you know, uh, Robert Gagne uh, made uh, this, uh, divided this lesson plan into uh, several parts, as you, you will learn in the third course. Uh, he, he divided them into like six, uh, seven um, parts. And he said, first one, for example, the gaining attention, attention get, uh, getters. It is warm ups, yes. Uh, reception information, learners, informing learners of objectives, yes. Uh, as for me, before beginning this course, maybe uh, most of the time I did research, researching, researching, but uh, my, uh, I didn't apply my um, knowledge in the practice. So I, I didn't, for example, uh, inform my learners about objectives. Um, maybe I said today our lesson will be this or that, but uh, here in informing learners of objectives, here they emphasize that to tell uh, what they will do and what will be the result. And this is important because once learners know, uh, they will they will, for example, get more motivated and. Uh, they know that um, the things that they are doing uh, gives them more uh, information, more knowledge. And uh, recall pr prior learning other steps intended to, uh, to help learners retain information. Yes, this is uh, all of these things are uh, cognitive process uh, that Robert Gagne uh, advised us to use uh, in teaching. So yeah, any other ideas about uh, cognitive approach? 
and um, yeah, just cognitive approaches. And as ideas, I mean, uh, do you use uh, cognitive approach in your and uh, in your teaching? And what do you see in cognitive approach um, help teachers to uh, to uh, teach effectively to to learners? Um, very useful because uh, cognitive approach is very helpful to um, prepare presentation uh, because it's very helpful to they are used to uh, behave themselves in front of the auditory in front of people and they use uh, to analyze which is uh, pluses and which is minuses Mm -hmm. And um, I just tried to do this with my elderly students before I um, taught them how to be helped themselves, how your eye contact should work or uh, how your emotions or voice tone should work. And after that, they prepared presentation, for example, about mummies or about the um, pharaohs and etc and etc and for others i gave a task to observe presentator and to and to give feedback how she or he used he her or his eye contact her tone voice information and her body language and they wrote it and they observe it and they say feedback and i just um, told them that it's very useful when they are go they go to the uh, universities or institutions or to present something new project or new techniques and i hope that they will use it my students mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you any other ideas before we move uh, next one So the next one is, as you see in your uh, on your uh, screen, that effective humanistic approach. It appeared in uh, 1970, and uh, this approach um, focused on the students, on their feelings. Uh, it uh, the purpose was uh, respect students' feelings as they learn a language, and uh, to remove all the barriers uh, that are. Uh, making their learning hard and making uh, students feel more comfortable in the learning environment. So in hum effective humanistic approach, they used uh, music, for example, while they are uh, reading a story or um, passages or uh, the, con the content was uh, place and costumes. They, uh, they used many different colors, some costumes, some stories, they played it together. And the uh, techniques was positive uh, uh, re uh, reinforcement and choosing new identity for the students. They ask uh, the students, for example, to uh, choose any names that uh, in English names that they want. Uh, multiple concerts means uh, you, for example, you read first, first of the time you read the uh, uh, dialogue with music in the background and then you play it uh, several times or uh, in listening uh, listening you can do for example first of all you uh, you put you place uh, the listening uh, like uh, two two three minutes without showing them and uh, on the screen maybe if you have video uh, and you will ask them what uh, you can ask them guessing question what do you think the next uh, situation will be in the uh, listening or in the play so and then uh, spontaneous uh, uh, creative thoughts through dramatic interpretation singing dancing yes and yes yeah, they most of the time um, technique used for like making the learning environment uh, more uh, colorful and uh, to motivate them they used most of the time games and stories and music and we can say that we are still using some of the uh, 
techniques from uh, effective humanistic approach. Yes, for example, I use uh, music. Sometimes I bring music that my students like. Sometimes I ask them uh, which uh, music are you, are you like listening these days? Or I ask them, uh, or I just go to, uh, to uh, Google and search their uh, famous uh, empathies uh, or, or famous music of these days. So uh, they will be very like happy to when they listen or they say, oh, this is my favorite singer or they say, oh, this is my favorite music. You know, this, this effective humanistic approach is very uh, useful, I think, in teaching especially. Any any teacher here use uh, this effective humanistic approach? Sometimes I use this one. Uh, how would I do? I just uh, play it um, classical music. And I make students to read uh, by this classical music because it helps to read fluent and to speak fluent because it's very difficult to make students uh, read um, uh, monotongal and to read without a or e without pause. Sometimes I joke and I say, where can you see these sounds? A, E, A, O. They laugh and I just play their music and I said just relax just listen to the music and by the rhythm of this music read as you yeah. are reading rap or you are uh, singing a song but very slowly and it's very helpful because I think music is very good effective on the student's mind yeah especially especially classical music especially Beethoven or Mozart or Chico. so you put in background music or you just put it and ask your students to read something uh-huh yes I I play music uh and then I uh ask to uh read okay I see mm -hmm. anyone else using this effective humanistic approach here Teachers, please be more active. Well, um, I can say something here. So, oh, did I? yes, that's me. So, I think that we owe much to emergence of this effective humanistic approach because if you just pay attention to all the other approaches which were mentioned by you uh, in those 100 years in a century. So majority of them focused on the teacher. So teacher was a, was on the stage and the teacher was the one who ruled the classroom. But the effective humanistic approach was the first one to uh, bring the spotlight, to put the spotlight on the learner. So implementation of this approach emphasizes that the feelings of the learners, they matter. and you know, um, if I just um, say that uh, school, it was German, but bad, back um, uh, back in the years when I was studying for my uh, bachelor degree, uh, every time when I was, uh, every time the question was asked uh, from the students, um, I was a little, you know, not shy, but afraid that uh, I might come up with the wrong answer. And it was not emphasized by any teacher that making mistakes were okay for losing my reputation after coming up with the thinking that uh, I'm not worthy of being in that classroom. So, you know, uh, and that's why, uh, making it clear to your students that making mistakes uh, is a part of a process that human um, is err, as they say, uh, was very crucial. And it is still crucial. So what else? Um, and, and yeah, so uh, from my experience, I decided that uh, I will not put any pressure on my students. Uh, and uh, still, 
uh, when they make mistakes, uh, I do not give just um, negative feedback on them. I try to make it more constructive. Um, what else? So all in all, I can say that I try to respect uh, my students' feelings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As as, as uh, they mentioned also about that, it also uh, reduce the effective filters. Yes, we talk about this last time. Yes. Yes. Reduce. Yeah, yes. Exactly. And it makes and them more independent. Yes. Go on, please. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure that it. Um, can be um, included in effective humanistic approach, but I think it's a healthy mixture of humanistic approach and audiolingual because um, I noticed that my students like uh, listening to music and uh, doing the exercise, which is connected to language acquisition um, learning. So um, I, I would choose uh, the hits of the time, um, the uh, hip hop musics, uh, which are popular uh, at that time of the stage. And uh, I would just, uh, maybe you did it uh, yourself, you guys, I mean, everybody. So I would just um, omit some words in the text and put the song, uh, which is uh, at reasonable speed. And we would listen at the beginning of the class uh, as a warm-up activity, we would listen to it and try to fill out the, the words. So I noticed that um, my students like it very much and it helped them um, to concentrate and uh, it just helped me to bring back them uh, into classroom. Yeah, yes, that's, that's uh, really true, yes. I also, uh, some of us, most of the time they ask me to uh, play the music again so that they sing together and we used to sing with my students together all of the time and yeah in, you know it also gives uh, like how to say good mood uh, before the lesson before the beginning of the lesson or even you are doing while while in your lesson uh, it gives your students like more motivation and they they want to re uh, to learn more yes okay so still uh, as we already told uh, we are still using some approach from here so positive uh, re uh, reinforcement uh, as we already said that uh, respect their feelings or uh, to make the context or to make the context of the learning more warm like to when you are doing teacher talk or giving more warm language that uh, that your students become uh, more uh, interested and they uh, they reduce their effective filters and they uh, try uh, to answer or try to be more active in the lesson because um, this uh, effective humanistic approach is not only is effect effective in this in the classroom but it effective everywhere if you respect someone's feeling if you give them to speak if you give them chance to uh, open i don't know their heart so it it is like it gives you more how to say even when you once if you know about Dale Carnegie, he also said that five uh, things that uh, make people uh, to be friends together is to listen to them. So listening to them means you're respecting someone's feeling. You see, it is very important to be, uh, it helps you to uh, like be friend with your uh, students and uh, the classroom will be more effective than to be more strict or to say some like I don't know to be like uh, to have more teacher-led strict lessons uh, it gives you more opportunity to to have more student-centered uh, classroom so multiple concerts we already said about it you uh, you put the same thing just in different order or just in different technique with different technique dramatization means uh, pl playing some uh, some role plays or I don't know some 
uh, you can bring some, for example, Hamlet, you can bring and ask them to play together. And yeah, it is very, uh, it may be a little bit difficult, but uh, it is very fun uh, that help teachers um, create more uh, positive uh, environment in the classroom. So after this, uh, there is again assignment saying that, uh, asking that explain why you agree or disagree with cognitive approach and explain why you, why about effective humanistic approach and uh, what techniques can you apply in your classrooms that align with your uh, preferred approach. I think we already told about this, uh, all of us, but if anyone wants to add something, uh, you're more than welcome. No, in this point? Okay, in the uh, last week, it is week five. Uh, I didn't uh, cover with week six because week six, it is like uh, everything like a summary. That's why week five is the last one. So in the last week, they talked about comprehension approach, uh, which appeared in 1980s. So the purpose uh, was how to, uh, to make meaning clear, to make me uh, the input more clear and uh, help learners to gain confidence so that they are willing to produce um, language. Here, uh, one of the very important thing is uh, they talk about a silent period. So. Uh, we should know that sometimes students need silence. So um, in comprehension approach, they focus you that uh, to uh, help learners to gain confidence once uh, they begin, to, uh, begin speaking themselves. So uh, it means that uh, most of the time, maybe they listen a long time and then uh, you uh, like ex accept that uh, you wait that they will also speak one, one day. But in silent period, uh, we need to uh, help them to gain confidence by saying that as uh, um, I think somebody said already, uh, by saying that mistakes is okay in the classroom and you can make mistake and uh, uh, it's okay in, in your classroom. If you always like uh, focus on mistakes and interrupt them at the point, uh, they may become like more demotivated. So the content was classroom objects. So as we know already, so visual aids and observable actions like jump, sit, walk, run, we use, yes, this kind of thing still. Uh, chunks of language in uh, novel combinations, means to bring some uh, new uh, vocabulary with new combinations or techniques was using uh, commands. For example, still we use sit down, come up to the blackboard or uh, other commands, right? Uh, action, actions, uh, uh, screen, uh, oh, sorry. Action, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I know, but I cannot pronounce. So, then role uh, reversal so you give the opportunity for your students that uh, so please you're a teacher now you teach so you will be a, stu a student so yeah i i remember from my uh, teaching that i use this technique and uh, students become very happy and they uh, turn by turn they ask me to prepare the lesson some topics i said yeah okay you just prepare some topics and bring it and turn by turn they showed me and they were very happy that's why uh, this comprehension approach is very uh, effective still I think and um, any ideas in this point uh, in uh, comprehension approach they focused on uh, on the using only the target language in the classroom. Yeah, we always say to our students, yes, especially at the Institute, we say, uh, please use English, English only classroom so that uh, uh, they uh, began to, uh, to talk more. Even they have mistakes, uh, then they, they try to uh, talk in English. If you, one time, if you, especially at, at Institute, again, I'm, um, 
reminding you because if you just let them to uh, to talk any language, maybe Russian or Uzbek, so then all of the time they begin talking in this language. That's why even out of the classroom, I I speak with my students in English. Uh, some of them say me, why you always uh, speak in, in English? You don't know any other languages. I say, no, I don't know. Please talk in English. So they, they have to talk and they, they begin uh, speaking in this case, you know, and the use of visual aids uh, to convey meaning. Yes, visual aids are very important. So uh, still we use still, uh, because as I said before, visual aids, uh, stimuli background information in in, the, in their brain and uh, it gives them more like uh, how to say opinion about uh, the coming topic or uh, about everything for example videos also very very useful yes if they uh, watch any video that is uh, associated with the new topic of your lesson uh, it is uh, it gives them more uh, vocabulary first of all more ideas and others uh, role uh, reversal is uh, we already said you can give them the opportunity to be a teacher or uh, other roles or use use of simple questions and dialects so uh, so that Especially it is important in primary and secondary school. Um, if you ask them like difficult questions, uh, they, they cannot answer or uh, if you give them like, uh, how to say, the questions that uh, makes them to think critically, sometimes they cannot think critically. So that's why the t teachers, uh, how to say, role here is to make uh, the input as simple as possible so that your students um, can understand everything on time and uh, uh, like convey the, your information, it would be more easier. So yeah, and the last one is communicative approach. So in the communicative approach, uh, they, uh, it also appeared in 1980s. Um, the purpose was help learners to love cultures and places and um, connect people together in order to create opportunities. Yes, as I, as they said here, uh, that in this approach is very broad. The teachers are free to uh, choose anything, but anything should not be anything. So uh, they should be very careful in uh, choosing the even authentic materials. They should be very, uh, how to say, careful uh, how, what to choose. And uh, there are thousand, thousand million of materials on internet or in as a hard copy so uh, it's your uh, opportunity i mean responsibility that you choose the right one for your students that uh, they learn the language in in a communicative uh, context so uh, content was uh, is still uh, carefully leveled uh, books with high interest themes or books often contain four skills yeah we know from uh, especially at institute or even at primary or secondary school uh, nowadays uh, textbooks contain all four skills so that uh, they learn language uh, not only in one context for example in one uh, not in one speaking or in reading context but also in writing and listening context because they are uh, connected with each other and books also contain contain um, some uh, items from grammar, culture, pronunciation, and uh, you see all of the, everything is contained in uh, communicative approach. So it is um, because, uh, you know, in order to, uh, to uh, progress communicatively, we, need to, uh, we, we don't need only just writing, reading, we need everything, uh, but Everything should be, how to say, level, leveled, first of all. And the second one is that everything should be step by step. And the uh, techniques uh, still is uh, use of authentic materials, uh, information gap exercises, language games. Yes, we like language games and students also like language games. They always ask me, 
let's play some games, let's play some games. Yes, in choosing games also we should be very careful. We cannot bring, for example, any game or, for example, uh, we cannot say, let's play basketball together. No, this is a different game. Yes, it is a language game. So uh, in language game, we need to be um, more appropriate uh, in choosing uh, according to the theme. So uh, last one is activities that create opportunities to communicate in the target language. So you can bring some uh, role plays, uh, you can ask them to uh, play the uh, role together, or you can bring some authentic situation, ask them to uh, uh, ask them how you can uh, react in this situation so that you they will show you. And uh, of course, in in target language, the situation will, may be different. In L, uh, L1, it can be different. That's why uh, you can give them opportunities that, uh, for example, in target language, they say this one. Or in L1, they say this one. So that uh, they uh, compare these two situations and uh, they, they will know then, oh, this is the situation in target language should be like this because um, this is very important to, uh, to show them that situations differ in, uh, in the, for example, when they go in, the, uh, in USA or in England or other countries, uh, they may think that the, the exact word may be correct when they are talking, but it may not be appropriate in that situation. That's why uh, we need to teach them that uh, which uh, words or which, um, I would say lexical frames or uh, these things are uh, appropriate for the certain situation. Uh, sequencing activities, uh, it is like, uh, I don't remember exactly about this. Um, any ideas, please? Uh, sequencing activities, so. Anyone is here or just I'm talking by myself? <laughs> yes, we are here. We're just having dinner and listening to you. I'm sorry because <laughs> it's time for feeding our family, especially children. They're so hungry. They had, <laughs> that's why I'm um, as eating, as listening to you. And it's, yes, very helpful. And I think I... I was in doubt whether I choose Coursera or not and which university Coursera is better. But now you make me sure that uh, this uh, Coursera is really very helpful because it reminds me other and it really gave me new information because about a uh, communicative, uh, communicative approach, I didn't uh, hear about these techniques Pre um, previous. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, language games and information gaps. Yeah, we are still using them. Uh, in information gap, for example, you can give uh, two topics. I mean, two, for example, let's say two images. Yes, but the first image is different than the second one in some cases. So uh, you will give them some question and ask them. Uh, they should ask from each other without looking the pictures, first of all. They need to ask uh, what is there or what is not there. Then they will uh, join the picture together and they will see. Uh, they will like fill information gap of each other. So yeah, and this is the last slide of today. So in the last assignment, they ask you to discuss the difference between these two approaches and uh, ask you uh, which approach most closely aligns with your current um, teaching style. As for me, I, I talked, uh, I said, that I wrote there that I use both of them. So yeah, you need to be like, uh, not so precise. It's asking you five, seven sentences, but most of the time I wrote uh, one page. So, so that the answer is long and the answer is um, like very appropriate so that uh, people who are reading your peer reviews uh, put you more more better mark yes but yeah they never put me like uh, I never had any like low mark 
uh, now just now I'm on the eighth course. So I think uh, that uh, peer review is very important. Uh, so uh, even some not uh, export, I mean, you are not being waited to, to be evaluated by the expert, but still uh, you are very excited that, oh, my peer, how, how she or will, uh, or he will uh, like evaluate me. That's why you need to be like to write more so that, yeah. So yes, this is, uh, I think uh, the end of today's session. It is, was about, uh, acquisition secondary oh sorry i'm also excited now i forgot uh, today's theme so it was uh, teach english now theories of second language acquisition yes we learned uh, eight approaches and we learned that uh, which approach we are still using uh, we learned about uh, about purpose content and technique how they uh, how uh, they are associated with these all approaches we, uh, that we talked already. So, yeah. So what I can say is that uh, teachers who are doing this, I first of all wish you good luck. Uh, I know some of the some of the thing inside of the course may be difficult. That's why uh, we um, organized this uh, study group. So. Study groups means you need also talk. Yes, I do hope uh, it was helpful, and um, I do hope uh, the the teachers who are still who are doing right now uh, will go till the end without difficulty. So if you have any uh, questions regarding, uh, for example, videos, I know uh, maybe many of you didn't come to a uh, micro teaching sessions, uh, but I think uh, not next one, but after the next one, we will uh, discuss how you, you can uh, take video, how you can do micro teaching, because most of the teachers nowadays asking me, oh, how can we take videos and these and those. So, so uh, I'm not going to say it now because most of you are still uh, uh, in the first one, second, third courses. So. But if anyone have got any question, yeah, I can answer. My question, uh, do, do they uh, ask you to take uh, your demo classes or yeah, demo videos? Yeah. They, they, uh -huh. So you, how did you eat uh, when it was quarantine? Because uh, we haven't got uh, offline lesson. We have got online lesson. How do you, could you be able to do your demo classes? Ah, uh, yes. They said that uh, students are not needed for uh, doing demo classes, so you can do by yourself. Yesterday, yeah, somebody was asking me. I said it, and I said that um, in in micro teaching, you will just pretend that. Uh, there is someone listening. You pretend that you have students in front of you, but they, but you don't take uh, anyone in front of you. You just take yourself, so that you can say, "Oh, welcome, dear students. How are you?" Or this, or that. Yeah. It, it in is this, little... but, but yes, but in this time, you cannot do a lot of tasks. For for example, uh, true false uh, the reading comprehension task or speaking or games or some activities or warm ups. Uh, you, Why? Uh, you can I mean, do, you can do. Uh, how you will do it yourself? Yes, you, you will be a little bit funny, but you will do it. <laughs> uh, uh, and is it okay for them? Is it okay not seeing the student's reaction or not seeing the result or Oh, it's really very interesting. Yeah, if you uh, if you want, I can show uh, my lesson. Yes, yes, please, yes, it please. Was a, I don't know, it was so funny, but yeah, I can show you. Okay, because I cannot imagine it at how how one teacher teacher should be teacher and student. Oh yeah, unfortunately yes, but it's not unfortunate. Uh, it is interesting. Now I, uh, I'm doing it and I'm saying, oh, it's interesting process. Uh, okay, I'm putting now, but it may, it may freeze because, yeah. 
connection uh, can be different in different people. Yes, that's why uh, don't be uh, how to say wonders that why it's freezing. But so, at the same hello, time, do you want to to your demo okay, class? You <laughs> yes, yes, it's yes. Right. So my my first thing to tell you is that today our lesson will be about. So I don't tell the theme right now, but you will guess, all right? So yeah. So here, what do you see here? For example, uh, what do you think it is? You have to guess today's lesson looking at these pictures. So, for example, this one, what does it mean? Wash your hands. Yes, right. Okay, so what about this one? Open the door. Yes, good oh. job. Yeah, so okay. what about... I think you saw it. Oh, this yeah. one? I'm, I'm not yeah, good. Don't talk. Shy now yeah. to show well, it to you. <laughs> this is your uh, this is your room and this is your wall and that's all you did it uh, did by your hand yes handmade items yes oh no so I actually um, I printed it out but you can do yes you can write it by yourself uh, I have so many videos that uh, uh, that other uh, peers my peers did in their lesson. So I can share them if you want, so so that you will have the idea how to take your uh, lesson. Raihona oh, is uh, great. Raihona, you want to, to say something? Raihona is rise, uh, raising your hand. Raihona. So yeah, I put uh, my videos on YouTube. So, so you go on YouTube, you go on your videos and then uh, you upload your video. You can upload your video without, how to say, um, without uploading on YouTube. But if you put on YouTube, it is uh, more convenient uh, that mm -hmm. anyone can watch, first of all. And secondly, is that uh, it, it is safe, uh, more safe, for example, than you put it in your um, computer, you see, uh, this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, this six, uh, um, how to say, videos I already prepared and put on my YouTube uh, channel, but I put it unlisted. Unlisted means uh, when I um, send the link that people can, can uh, sh uh, watch it. Others cannot watch it because it is unlisted. That's oh. why. Okay. And what about the number of micro teaching? How many do we need to do? How many micro teaching during the course do we need to do? Okay, so uh, on the uh, fourth course, you need just one. Then in fifth one, you need one, one, uh, six, one, seven, one. Yeah. Uh, all together. Okay. All together. Uh, let me count, okay? Because there are so many. <laughs> okay. There's so many, right? Excuse me? It seems too many, right? Oh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so eight. Oh, it's 10. 10 right. videos you need to take. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can recommend you also uh, to use uh, uh, Camtasia Studio, this one. Can you see this green, uh, mm -hmm. green one? Yes. Yeah, this one yes. you can download on your computer. So mm -hmm. uh, you can take your video, but uh, this uh, this make you your how to say your picture stay on the corner. It shows you just on the corner very little picture. That's why I think it would be more better if you just put your my camera uh, in front of you, uh, as I did in my lesson. Then uh, what you do, what you do is that, for example, in your lesson uh, micro teaching, you will have some. Uh, how to say, it? you will have some um, mistakes, yes, you know, uh, this, uh, this Camtasia Studio helps you to cut that mistakes. For example, uh, once I put the video, uh, once I open the uh, camera on my uh, smart smartphone, so then I go to my place and I say some words. Sometimes I make mistakes, then I begin again. Or sometimes I make mistake in, in the middle of my lesson. 
that's why this Camtasia Studio helps me to cut that mistakes or to cut that inappropriate places in my micro teaching. It's not that easy, but I recommend you to, to begin downloading and to begin um, learning how it works, uh, how this Camtasia Studio works, because uh, you will need it uh, for sure. You will need it soon, that's why. Any question? Yes, but what about the peer observation? You should be observe it and they should write down feedback for your lesson and yes. what or isn't demanded. No, of course uh, they will. Uh, okay, let me uh, show you on my screen, but uh, until it uh, opens. So yeah, for example, once you once you go uh, to your uh, course, it uh, once you download your own video, it asks you to peer review at least three three your three of your peers. So sometimes I I review more than three. Sometimes I review seven people so that I see more how they are doing. You know, uh, it helps me to get more ideas. So also I'm. Uh, what I'm doing is that I'm saving their videos on YouTube so that uh, maybe you or other, our other uh, friends ask me how to take the video. I can share uh, videos of my peers so that they can see and they can have more ideas. Yeah, when, uh, once you go, for example, to this assignment, let's say uh, week one. Okay, so let me see. I will show you how you give feedback, how they or how you or they give you feedback. It's a little bit slow. Sorry. Do you study every day or do you study five days in a week? week yeah, or I two? study 24-7. <laughs> Oh my God! You don't work anywhere else. Yes, you just study here. No, I work, but uh, actually nowadays uh, we have, we, are, we have got online learning. I teach online, so I have time. So sometimes, yeah, I still I stay uh, till midnight to do some my because you know I don't want to uh, to go visit long time. I'm just a little bit on rush. I want to finish it earlier that's why i'm on a rush but you can yeah you can how to say you can do it uh, on your own pace at your own pace mm -hmm. what we were doing i forgot it yeah i, I need to go to maybe yeah okay. yeah also you need to do like 10 uh, lesson plans sometimes they ask you to edit your lesson plan for example this one they asked me to edit reading writing lesson plans that i did in my on my seventh course, they ask you just edit one portion. They ask you uh, any any part you can edit. Uh, so now uh, let me go to the. Um, okay, so. Your family is also very hungry. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. They so I, I already peer uh, reviewed my uh, peers, so this one, yeah. Okay, sorry for taking long, so. Yeah, you go to peer review, you just uh, click start reviewing. Uh, then, uh, uh, for example, they show, uh, okay, I don't want to read a person's name because it is a uh, security reason. So you go uh, micro lesson on that they, they did it. So you go to the, you click the link they gave you. And then you see here, uh, there is a rubric. So rubric means how you assign, uh, how you make assessment. So they ask you, for example, did the learner submit a lesson plan or uh, second one, for example, did the learner's lesson plan include all the important components? Oh, I understand that you don't have to write it. You should only choose, yes? 
by these questions you should only choose yes or no yes or no yeah yeah of course yeah and this okay. is observation form yeah observation uh, oh, it's it's you very can also convenient give uh, feedback here feedback uh -huh. you can say i most of the time i write well done good job nice or sometimes i say uh, maybe some of sometimes they don't upload their videos you can say you should say them that uh, i think you you need to upload your video because i cannot see your video uh, the, because uh, if you don't tell them they don't put them they get a low mark that's why uh, it would be more better if you inform about this yeah mm. The, then they ask you, uh, for example, was the uh, micro uh, micro lesson between six ten minutes in length? Because uh, they ask you uh, to have less than uh, ten minutes uh, and more than six minutes. If you put like a lesson uh, that's uh, between one to five minutes, then it would be uh, incorrect. So that you need to talk six minutes, or mm -hmm. most of my videos are almost ten minutes. So or did the learner teach a part of reading and writing lesson plan as the audio or visual aspect of the video easy to see or easy to hear or did the learner incorporate incorporate some technology active in the activities in their micro lesson and you can provide some feedback here you can provide i don't know you can write long or short it's up to you yeah, you see, uh, the rubric are not, all rubrics are not such kind of like long, but in the eighth uh, course, yeah, the rubric is long, so you need to give feedback to a little bit longer than other uh, than other courses because, as I remember, in uh, one to third courses, the rubric was very little, like two three questions. Then, then once you finish giving feedback, then you press submit review. That's mm -hmm. all. Then it's done. Oh, it means that um, besides being a good teacher, you should be good director and a good operator. Or you should help, uh, ask to help someone to take a very good video, very colorful and in right uh, Place. No, you can you can take for example I'm, I'm taking my video myself i'm just putting my phone in front of me there is nobody in, in the in the room because if someone is in front of me i cannot teach i mean i may i may laugh or i may forget my words that's why i prefer to do it just myself without anyone mm -hmm. okay so no any question no, everything is clear. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Mrs. Nodera, are you here? Yes, thank you so much. Yes, that was really useful. I was just mainly listening today. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, see you all next week. Yeah, see you. <laughs> you thank you very much and i hope that the next time uh, our webinar will be on time yeah on time and uh, will be more uh, like how to say interactive yes we need to talk more not just the other but others as well yes <laughs> i think okay. for them it's it's for the first time for most of the our members for the first time maybe they uh, cannot catch the meaning uh, of this webinar maybe i don't know i cannot guess but for me it's like revision and that's why i uh, i'm very interested in this topic okay thank you yeah we'll uh, see you next week with the third uh, third topic uh, which is called uh, let me one more time this i think it was about uh, lesson designs yeah who is in, in the third course nobody here yeah third course is uh, teach english now lesson design and assessment yeah we will hope uh, you will come and we'll um, discuss about lesson design and assessment next week okay yes please okay thank you very much good luck Thank you.